Yo, welcome back everybody to a new video. So today we're gonna be doing something I've never done before. So your feedback is really important to me here. Cause uh, yeah, if you don't like this, it's all good. And if you do love this, you know, let me know, like the video, leave me a comment and all that good stuff. So what are we doing here? So recently, um, past few days, I went and rushed myself to master tier. Uh, cause this, this split one is gonna end soon. And I figured I wanna at least have master, keep the streak going, right? You know, it used to be challenger, what I have. I <laughs> I hit Challenger every year, but I, I just, I don't like to end Challenger. Like, Challenger cutoff is like a 1,000 LP right now. But anyway, point is, I digress. Uh, I went on a bit of a streak here where I actually got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 MVPs in a row. Obviously, you can't get MVP for your losses, but for the wins, 12 MVPs in a row. So, what I was thinking is, what if I go through one of these games... And kind of like a VOD review and just walk you guys through like my thought process and, you know, try to help people that are trying to climb, especially at the end of season here and of split, uh, you know, this maybe some tips could help you guys and uh, yeah, just something new, you know, different style of video. Obviously, it's not going to be the norm, you know, on the channel, um, but, you know, every now and then I could throw in one of these uh that could be really helpful for climbing and stuff like that. So let me know what you guys think. We're going to get into one of these. I'm going to pick this game because I had 17 kills this game. That sounds awesome. Uh, diamond one, diamond two players across the board. So yeah. All right, let's get right into it. All right, here we go. I'm going to show you guys the strategy I used to get 12 MVPs in a row. Hopefully this helps. Again, let me know. Love your feedback here. Um, I always like to go onto my red side. Um, I always just do this. I go here, I do my dance, I start totem, and I just wait here till around 106, 110, and then decide where I want to start my buff. Because if you are here at 110, you still have time to make it to your blue buff. Totally fine. Um, any later than that, you might be a little late. So I always sit around here. Around 110, I start moving. Um, Especially if I'm going blue. Wow, that's funny. Actually, exactly. Wow, okay. That's exactly what I'm doing. I swear I did not pre-watch this. I swear to you. Uh, but it is me playing, so I guess, you know, I can predict what I'm going to do. Anyway, next thing I do, I actually request no leash on purpose, uh, which is why I'm pinging back. And the reason I do that is because um, I want my laners to have all the advantage they possibly can give themselves. And them leashing me is going to potentially set them behind, potentially get them first blooded. You know, they hit level two later, yada, yada. Um, also, another, you know, uh, benefit of this is the enemy team is going to have a lot more trouble actually figuring out what side of the map I started on because I didn't get a leash. Um, yes, in, you know, in this current patch that we're in, I think 14 point something, uh, you don't need a leash on most junglers, you know, totally fine to not go leash. Um, anyway, uh, moving on, we're playing against an Udyr. Uh, it is a Conqueror Udyr, so most likely going to be the AP tank build. Um, Matchup-wise, I think it goes about pretty even. Um, he does a lot of damage early game. That's where we really need to be careful of him is in the early game. Um, but yeah, just start in blue here. I, I usually actually start red. This is one of those rare blue game starts. And the reason I started blue, this is important, is I always analyze, like, real fast, let's pause for a second. I always analyze the team comps, right? So what I do is, this is literally my thought process. I look at top lane. All right, I'm like, okay, Malphite versus Aatrox, right? Okay, here's the things that we need to know about this matchup. Malphite, immobile unit to level six, has horrible setup to level six, and, you know, he's kind of just a tank. You can just leave him be, right? Even if he feeds, he'll be useful. Aatrox, very strong early, mid, late game. This champion is also easy to gank, though. He's not super mobile. He has a little dash. But he can also 1v2 if you mess up, right? So that's something to understand, too. And another thing here is Aatrox is a character that snowballs. So if you set him behind early, he is out of the game, pretty much, essentially. You set you set Malphite behind early, he's still going to be useful. He's a tank. This guy's not a tank. So definitely a volatile lane that we could affect uh, later on. Mid lane, I'm going to move on a little quicker here. Uh, Yone versus Jace. Range versus melee. Kind of annoying for Yone to deal with. So if we can help him pressure a little bit, we will try. Bot lane, Kaisa Bard versus Seraphine Pike. So the things I look at bot lane is how much damage can bot lane do and what kind of setup do they have and what kind of disengage do they have? So if we look at Kaisa Bard, we have a lot of damage, we have a lot of setup, and we have a lot of disengage. Bard can disengage with his Q, can tunnel away, uh, he can engage with Q, yada, yada. You guys get the point. Seraphine Pike, 
pretty low damage. Uh, Seraphine's pretty weak early. Uh, she's a scaler, mega scaler. Um, so you usually want to try to set her behind early or she'll scale out of control. Uh, Pike, good setup. Pretty poor disengage, though. Because um, kind of once he's in, he's in, you know? Um, so this this fall in is definitely easy to kill. Uh, immobile, she's immobile. Um, if she pushes farther up, like farther, like far enough from this middle lane or middle line, uh, we should definitely look to gank this. And then uh, one last thing I want to say here is since we are on the blue side of the map, bot lane, super easy to gank because we have all of this, right, to work with. Uh, on the other hand, Udir, I mean, he, he doesn't have much to work with. We have walls, you know, we have some walls. His terrain is much uh, less forgiving. Um, and the the get the takeaway from that, like it's a give and take. You, you, top lane's harder to gank for me, unless I'm playing Rek'Sai and I can just go through the wall. Because this wall is like what protects top lane, but Rek'Sai can just tunnel through the wall, which is why I'm loving Rek'Sai right now. She She's really, really strong. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, I figured I wanted to tell you guys about matchups because I think it's a little important to understand that when you get into a game, you want to analyze as best as you can to the best of your ability. Oh my God, did I do that? <laughs> to the best of your ability, you want to analyze what are the lanes looking like and what can you do to affect them? So the reason, by the way, the reason I path bottom is I don't think I can do anything here until around level six or if Aatrox makes a big misplay, like he overextends really low HP. So we're going to look to play bot side. Here I put a ward down. Um, it doesn't put me behind too much. Plus I can just probably tunnel here in a second. Yep. There we go. I always like to put a ward here um, outside my Raptor camp. Even when I start red side, I actually put a ward here when I start when I'm at my Raptor camp because it takes like a second, and a lot of the time it pays off. Sorry, I feel like I'm talking a lot. Let me know if uh, <laughs> you guys want less less anal analytical. Uh, Analysis. Anyway, we're at Krogs here. Clear is um, a little slower than I would like. I'm done at 330, which is not too bad. Could have probably saved a couple seconds if I did things a little bit better. Um, so if you look at this, this is actually quite gankable um, because they're, they're pushed up. But you want to be careful when you gank on this side. Pike could pull you into tower, and they could just destroy you with ignite and everything. So you got to be a little careful here. So I'm I'm being cautious. Also, I don't know if this is warded or anything. So I'm just gonna go here and get the crab for now. I go ahead and ping my top laner to back up because if Udir's not at the bottom crab, he's on top side. That's how we know he's top side, and that's how we know he started. That's how we know he started blue side. Because if Udir started red side, he should be contesting this crab with me, or he should have killed the crab by now. So that's just a, a good way to figure that out. Oh, look how far up they are. That is illegal. We're going to go for our first gank here, I'm pretty sure. They also don't have any wards, which is really bad of them. They got too close to their tower, so I just do not do anything. Yeah, Bard is... Bard... Yeah, see what Bard did? He did exactly what I told you not to do. Don't gank around this area versus like a pike. He could pull you into tower range. Then you're stuck in this really awkward position where you can only run away and you're ignited. You're stunned. He does flash, I believe. And at this point, this play, just it's just doomed. Um, what he should have done a little bit better is like be a little bit more patient. See if they uh, get in range for a stun. Either way, we go for the knock up there because, I mean, I'm already... I'm already stunned here anyway. I may as well go for a knockup while I'm leaving. Go for some damage. I'm going for the lowest target units. And then I am getting out of there. Yep. Uh, oh, they're getting low. One HP, Seraphine. Let's go. All right. Nice. Well, that was obviously not an ideal scenario. Um, we did what we could. Uh, it looks like Kaisa is blaming me for that one instead of the bard who went under tower, but it's all good, happens. You know, you're gonna get blamed in Solta Q, just keep on trucking. It's fine, the people naturally blame. Oh, this is good, easy kill. Rek'Sai is really strong early game too. Um, if you let her get that knock up, uh, she can turn on you. Here, I'm actually freezing the wave for my Kai'Sa. I could go unburrow and try to take all this farm. That's not good to do if you're trying to win. Um, especially because Kaiser just died and got nothing out of it. So to keep her, not only her character in game, but also her morale, 
let's just freeze the wave and let her come clean this up. So that's what we do here. It's now frozen. All this, all these minions ready for Kaisa to take. And we get out of here. Oh no, I remember this play. Don't do this. Oh, don't do what I just do here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's okay. Speed it up, speed it up. Nothing happened. Speed it up. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I tried to unbro on Seraphine there so Kaisa could finish her off, but that was just... That was just too forced. Anyway, Malphite just died. Aatrox is quite low. He is level 6, though. Level 6 Aatrox, it'll be full HP in half a second with his lifesteal. So I'm not going to gank that. I go top side here because I want to path back to bot lane for now until Malphite's 6. But here we go. Oh. Who did? Oh, their mid laner just left for a second. Okay. Uh, I hover top for a second just to see if he gets greedy, but nope. We're good. I look at Grubs. I think I do start him just to see what happens. Sometimes it's okay to do this. Just start an objective, see what happens, right? Uh, Udyr shows up. I'm going to back up for a second. Here's the thing, though. Malphite's level 6 now. He's going to be level 6 any second because Aatrox was 6. And he's in lane. Uh, both mid laners are missing, but I know Aatrox just left. So it's not bad to just sit around here for a second. All right, Aatrox is TPing back in. Their mid laner is coming. Or, I mean, my mid laner is coming. Oh, it's a shame that their Jace actually DC'd here. I didn't even know that. Missed the bro. Pretty troll. Do we finish them? We think we do. Amazing. It's actually unlucky for Udyr that his Jace was gone there. Um, I'm sure he's going to come back any second. But it's kind of bad of Udyr like, to even... There he is. That was bad of Udyr to even try to contest that, knowing his mid laner was DC'd. So even though his mid laner was gone, um, he should adapt, right? Like, don't fight the objective if he's not there. That's what you should do, too. I had a lot of games. Oh, I have a really funny Twisted Fate game where one of my teammates got system muted, and then one of my teammates just completely left the game. It was a 4v5, and we still won. That's pretty funny. Um, I don't think we get him here, do we? Oh, we do. Yeah, he gets B though too, right? Yeah, that was really well played by Jace. And Yone played that really well for cleaning up that kill. He goes back in because he saw the stun. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. One for one. Not bad. Um, reason I went for that gank is I saw the wave was towards our side of the map here. So I figured I'd just go for it. Sometimes it's good to just go for things, see if it works out, you know. All right, here. We're going back to red side. Oh, again? No, he's back. He's back. Yeah, he's back. He's back. <laughs> oh, nice one, dude. You're showing casing a 5v4. You're really good at the game, man. No, okay. Listen, he DC'd for like a minute and I didn't even know. Anyway. Going for some Raptors here. Now, Rek'Sai is, uh, gets a huge power spike at 6. Her ulti, very, very strong. It is a uh, Execute. It does high base damage and it um, has a huge gap close. And on top of that, does 25% missing health physical damage. So, really good to try to get your ulti by 8 minutes in. Um, you don't want to be that kind of jungler that gets his level 6 at 10 minutes. right? You're not jungling right if you're doing that. <laughs> Um, all right. So we're doing red buff here. Red buff just spawned. That's why I didn't do red earlier after Krugs. Also, you notice when I play Rek'Sai, I try to actually set up like a little tunnel system here. So I try to use my E's in a way where I could reuse them again. So I could reuse this one. I could reuse this one. I could reuse this one. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so those ones I could reuse. All right. So it's good to understand that's what we're trying to do here with the tunnels. All right. Oh, actually, you know what? Maybe it's better we do blue side vision. I think that might be better. Let me know in the comments as well. Should we do both sides vision or just our side? I don't know. Hmm. Not sure what you guys prefer. Maybe blue side's better, so it's like more like natural. Anyway, I see my bot lane's fighting here, so I'm just hovering to see if I can make an impact, and it looks like I can because the stun lands. So I go for Seraphine. Don't get too greedy for the pike under tower. Just ulti in, 
bang, get a shutdown for ourselves there. Very nice. Now, I'm probably going to help Kaisa push in. No, I see their jungler there. We're good. Now, if I didn't see their jungler here, if I didn't see their jungler here and we we're going to push in this lane, I want to help Kaisa push this in so she's not stuck here by herself and then gets Udir coming from behind to kill her. But since we saw Udir, we didn't need to do that. Yeah, she should push that in. That's fine. I think we get the kill there. Nice. We should get out of here, though, because we saw Jace. Yep. I think that's a one for one, right? Yeah, it's going to be a one for one, unfortunately. Uh, not the best play for us, but again, not every game's going to be perfect. It's fine. Uh, speed up the recall here. All right, so we see Bard getting chased by some goons. Uh, I don't have any jungle camps here, but I'm just hovering Bard to see if I can make an impact. And it looks like I can't, so I'm probably going to go topside here if I had to guess. Am I going to... Or I guess I can contest Dragon too. I do Dragon. I think I do Dragon. Huh. This play is a little questionable. I'm going to be honest. I don't know what I was thinking here. <laughs> Definitely one of those Hail Mary type of plays where like, ooh, we could get Dragon for free if they don't have a ward. Because this doesn't show vision of the Dragon Pit. It only shows vision of here. Looks like it works out, but I'm not going to say this is a good play. This is a play you could try. The, th the thing is also, I am Rek'Sai, right? Like, if they come to me, I could tunnel away. So worst case scenario, I'm leashing them the dragon. That's not good, but it's not horrible. Okay, so it's like, you know, we, we go for it. We, we know they're about to, they're like, they're on recall timers, right? They just fought a skirmish and now they're recalling potentially, right? So I think that's what I was going for. But, um... All right, looks like we're just clearing vision here. Since we since they saw us on vision, I'm not going to make a play here, I don't think. Um, something I like to prioritize in these games, which is why we get MVP a lot, is grubs. Grubs are huge. They help you push towers so fast. Now, a lot of people don't understand how grubs work, right? You might be like, oh, yeah, no, I know how grubs work. It does true damage to the tower over time. I get it. No, it's not just that. Those little grub little mites that spawn make your wave two times the size. So instead of having four minions on your tower, you have four minions plus three little spawns that take tower shots. So it gives you so much power in the game. It lets you take towers that you shouldn't have gotten otherwise. So I go for the counter gank here. I have my ulti in case we need it. I think I ulti to get out of tower range there. And I'm going to die. But a two for one, they lose all of these minions. And Yone could potentially get plates here. It looks like he's going to not do that but because he saw pike but that's an amazing play we like a one for two that helps us win the game especially when yone is getting the gold that guy's a hyper carry so all right so now we're looking at malphite aatrox malphite just ulted which we could see um in game you see like his little green ball uh is not green anymore um looks like they're you know it looks like he might get the kill here let's see what happens Beautiful one for zero. And that's what I'm talking about, right? Malphite's a tank. When you see a tank on your team, you do not need to gank for them unless it's a guaranteed kill. Because why? He's down 30 farm. He died in a one versus one, but he still scaled and solo killed the Aatrox. That's tanks, baby. Tank 101. So yeah, tanks are just kind of like pressure uh, lifted off the jungler. You know, even if they feed, they're still going to be useful. Looks like we're trying this again. Um, I have prio top. And what prio top means is uh, if something were to break out here, like a fight, my top laner can get to me before their top laner does. And my mid laner also could get to me before their mid laner does. So I have mid prio as well. So a great time to start the objective. But here we see Udir is actually chasing my ultless and flashless Malphite. Uh, he has AP Udir, so he does a good amount of damage. So I spot that and I'm pretty sure I get off. Yep, I get off one, after one crab. I go in, press my E. Now, this is actually a little important here. This is like one of those micro plays that I'm just going to try to explain. But on Rek'Sai, you want to try not to show yourself to the enemy till it's too late for the enemy. So what I mean by that is like, let's say I was like right clicking here, walking, walking. He's like, oh no, Rek'Sai, and then starts running away. Okay, what's going to happen? We might lose this kill because he saw me, right? But I'm walking through this fog of war right behind this bush. 
He cannot see me. I walk in, walk in, walk in, walk to the bush. E behind him. Even if you start running away, you are dead, my friend. Which he tries to do here. And you're a goner. The little micro play I wanted to explain there. Really important to use Fog of War and learn how Fog of War works. See that Aatrox is around? Doesn't matter. Yone's here. I'm here. Oh, it was Pike, actually. I thought that was Aatrox. That's good, because their Pike just wasted time. Well, not really, because there's nothing to do here anyway, but yeah. Great time to roam as a support when your wave is like this. Now he needs to come back to lane, though. Um, because Seraphine wants to farm these minions, and if she were to come, if she were to be like right here, she could easily die uh, to a gank, to a 1v2, right? So he needs to be back in lane soon. All right, so looks like, oh, first time item, I go Stride Breaker. I go, uh, I try to get a Ruby Crystal as soon as possible on Rek'Sai, because I feel like Rek'Sai is kind of squishy, naturally. So that Ruby Crystal helps me a lot. So I go Ruby Crystal, Longsword, uh, into the Stride Breaker, Tunnel Lure, before Caulfield's Warhammer on the Sundered Sky. I just, again, love that flat health that it gives you. It just gives you, it gives you more survivability and less chance to feed. So do that, I think it's good. We're going Sundered Sky second. Rexa is one of those few champions where I actually like Sundered Sky second instead of first, because Stridebreaker is so strong on her. So here, um, let me actually talk about this one more time, because I actually was, I was pinging, uh, ugh talking for too long. Let's pick in Malphite here. You'll see that I'm pinging him to kill the Aatrox. Ready? Here it comes. Wait, did I not ping him? I could have sworn I pinged him. Rek'Sai is on the way, 1244. Oh, it's bugged. Yeah, you see in the chat? Anyway, point is, I pinged him because I saw Malphite had ulti. I saw that he was going to push under tower. And I'm like, wait a second. If Malphite ulties under tower here, I can just go through this wall and we kill him again. Because Stridebreaker is so powerful too. And my ulti has gap close and everything. I saw my ulti, so I go around. Really good ulti by Malphite under tower. We go here. Bang, bang, E. I'm going gonna... I'm gonna to save my ulti if I can. So here, obviously, if I ultied, he dies. But um, we're not in any danger. We're going to save our ultimate. It's a 90 second cooldown. We can use it for the next play. It'd be so funny if I actually just used it here anyway. <laughs> actually, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying this because if I say that, like, I was going to do something and I do the exact opposite, it just looks like, it's just so funny. It's peak comedy. Love it. Anyway. I'm going to try to speed things up a little bit here. I think we're taking a little long. So we're getting some camps here. I need 1950 to finish my, um to finish my Sundered Sky. So I'm not gonna recall till probably a 1950 here. Cause if I recall, I'm only gonna get a Caulfield's Warhammer. Oh God, League of Legends is such a complex game. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go through this uh, real quick. Uh, knowing what items you should recall for and shouldn't recall for is important as well. Uh, just letting you know that. Caulfield's Warhammer on Rek'Sai, it's great to have, but if I have a lot of jungle camps up and I'm 600 gold away from finishing the item completely, uh, I'll stick around. Try to stick around as long as I possibly can. I'm pretty sure I don't recall till I have Sundered Sky. Could be wrong, but that's what I would do here if I were to play this game again. All right. Looks like we're hovering a fight here. That's why I don't go instantly to Krugs there. Again, setting up tunnels that we can reuse in the future, which is nice. Rek'Sai is very unpopular, I notice. Every time I upload a Rek'Sai video, it doesn't do well. But I really think it's, it's it's a champion you guys should definitely... You know, if you want to climb as a jungler, definitely a really powerful champion right now. Um, here, real quick, I want to say something. So, I think their bot lane spotted my bard. I'm pretty sure. Yes, they did. See, they spotted my bard. So now, what does a bot lane do when they spot the support on the opposite side of the map? They're going to engage. Now, you can use this fact to your advantage so many times as a jungler. I will sit here, right? Let's say I finish my Krug sooner. I will sit here knowing they're going to engage on Kai'Sa because they see Bard and immediately counter gank. Now, I got lucky that I just finished my Krugs and I'm now now just ready and they engage in the same moment I was here. They're dead. They're both dead. Good night. Messed up my E there. I eat a little early. Press my ulti to finish off Seraphine. There we go. And we got our flash as well. That's a huge play. And Bord is still getting his roam off. 
And it looks like I'm chasing Pike. I think I do get him here. Yep. Got it. There we go. Beautiful. Also, with Stride Breaker, try to use your Stride Breaker right after the knockup uh, uh, duration expires. Just try to think of the word there. So that way you don't overlap CC. You try to maximize the duration of your CC. All right, anyway, Dragon's coming up. Herald is up. Herald is one of my favorite objectives now. It's such a powerful um, objective to get. So I probably will go for it here. Gold count, we have way more than enough for Sundered Sky. And I think I can even buy my... Uh... I actually don't remember what boots I went here. I have to do this again. I would probably say... I think Ninja Tap... Plated Steel Caps, whatever you guys call them. I think I'm going to go Plated Steel Caps. Because they have Jace AD, Pike AD, uh, Aatrox AD. They have Seraphine and Udyr for... Udyr's kind of AP, but he's pretty... He's not doing well. And, uh... Seraphine. She's avoidable. Anyway. In one of these games where Plated Steel Cops and Merc Treads don't seem to have too much value either way, sometimes you can just, like, not finish boots and just go for your third item. Sometimes I do. Let's see what I do here. Go Sunder Sky, and then... He's thinking. And he goes Negatron Cloak. Actually, that's a smarter play, because if you think about it, look how much Amara I had before that purchase. I had 48 MR. That's so low. That is really... That's like level 1 talent MR. That's super bad. Versus an AP Udyr, AP Seraphine. It's good to get a little bit of MR... Uh, a little bit of magic resistance here. Um, to kind of keep it even. So, I love to go third item Jack Show. I think it's an OP item that you can build on Bruisers. Um, so, we go from 32% to 49% damage reduction. So, we just gained almost 20% damage reduction against magic damage with one 900 gold purchase. That's way better than anything else you could purchase. Unless I was planning on going Merc Treads. I guess Merc Treads wouldn't be bad for 900 gold, but I guess I'm still thinking about it or just choosing not to worry about boots for now. Anyway. Oh, let's go back to our vision here. So we're going to look for second dragon. Dragon soul has an extremely high win rate. Oh, well, I want to explain this one here. This is super important to learn too. So again, let me know if you guys want me to like explain a little less in these videos. Um, if we do them again, if you guys like them, but anyway, so something you want to know is the way we thought you, I explained Fog of War, there's another like another micro thing that you should understand is when champions are charging up abilities, that's a great time to go on them because they can't, like when he's charging, he is Q. He is stuck in Q animation. He cannot E away as Pike immediately. He is stuck. So like he's charging. I'm like, oh, that's my ghost signal. He's charging his ability. I know that if I have time to engage on him and he can't do anything about it. Boom. Now he can press E, which he does after the knockup. And then I press R to dodge all of their abilities and immediately take him out of the fight. We front to back here. Um, oh yeah, this is a misplay by me, I remember. So here, we definitely could have killed the rest of them for sure. But half our team wants to go do dragon and half our team uh, decides to go for this. I'm going to just say no comment. Uh, I should have adapted to my team and just went to dragon. Uh, so I guess I am leaving a comment, but uh, I think I'm making a misplay here. This is bad from me. When your team does dragon, do dragon. You can't control if you, you can't mind control, you know. So what do we do here? I die. We get one. We get two. And we lost three people for it. So, if all five of us were there, we probably would have 3-0'd them. Um, but we weren't, so it should have adapted to that. Alright, death timer. I'm gonna go ahead and speed that one up. So here, no more objectives are available. Um, just gonna go ahead and try to get an efficient jungle clear going. Start with the raptors, I guess. Probably should have started with Krugs in hindsight. Yep. Yeah, not, see, now I'm going... Well, okay. I guess because I realized I had inefficient pathing, I'm just going to go for this Aatrox play instead. Which I think is actually... 
see what happens here. I think it's a bad play. Yeah, it's too forced. Way too forced. Because they still have a tower here. Really bad play by me. And then an even worse play by Yone. He should have just... In this case, your jungler is being stupid, right? That's me. I'm being dumb. Uh, he should just be like, bro, leave. So anyway, I'm tanking tower for him, for him because I notice he's going to get pulled back in. I'm sitting here, and then I'm like, let's get out of here. I'm trying to kite, trying to peel back, and he kind of goes a little too hard. He has a thousand gold to Aatrox. At this point in time, I said, I am so sorry. My bad, you know? It's my fault that happened. Uh, we're getting chased by Udyr. I'm gonna get out of here, I hope. Now, one thing I wanna say here, really important you know how this works. Every single auto attack you do on a champion will heal you for 101 plus 6% of missing health. So that's a big heal when I auto attack Udyr, which I'm pretty sure I use here, and also on Pike, which I think he's gonna show up here. So I, do I auto them? I think I do, let's see. There you go, auto, there's the heal, and one for one. We'll take it. We'll take it. I mean, they sent three people, and it was a one for one, so it's not bad. All right, let's go ahead and skip a little bit. All right. So, uh, now we're going to go do red buff. Uh, at 20, 20, 0, 3, 20 minutes and 3 seconds, this goes to an entire team. But I don't recommend you, like, purposefully wait for that time. Like, if it's 19, 20, reds off, just get it. Just go ahead and get it. I think the reason I went red side here is because um, I wanted to end near Baron when Baron spawns. But now I see like a, a big skirmish is breaking out, so I'm going to try to join him. I'm going to be honest, this is just a little bit disorganized, this whole play, but... Oh, I tried to flash on Burrow on him, and he I thought it was going to be here, but he ended up being there. Watch. That one hurt. So from our point of view... From our point of view, he's here, right? He's right there. Boom! <laughs> oh, that's unlucky. Unlucky. Lost vision of it. It's okay. He dies, though. He dies. And I think we keep going. There we go. Get my ulti. Oh, really nice plan, Rek'Sai. You do Predator when you're burrowed to get that long-range hit. Then you R to gap close. And then when you land, you Stride Breaker them. So they can't... They get slowed. Really, really cool. Engaged by us. I, I decided to go Seraphine here because I realized she's way squishier. I think we... Alright, wait, that's it. Okay. Alright, still pretty good. We got a flash on Seraphine. Am I going to keep going? I definitely could. I'm full HP. I drop I drop Herald here. And are you buying? I think I'm going to do it again. Yep. It doesn't matter. I see Pike, Seraphine. They're low HP. It's fine. <laughs> I run them over. <laughs> nice. They can't do much here. They're in trouble. They should not be contesting this, I think. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Did I get this guy killed? <laughs> no, no. One versus three. Let's go. Oh man. I'm a coward. Again, this is, this is kind of just skirmishing. Um... I sit here to see if he'll face check me. Um, instead, he warded. If he pulls me in here, I know he just used his E, so he's in trouble. That was a mistake on his part. Yeah, I think he's just going to die here, no? Alright. There we go. Nice. It's good to understand like what abilities and summoners they can use to escape your play. And if they run out of them, yeah, you can just hard commit. Definitely a little bit of a clown fiesta, though. You know, every, everyone's fighting everything. You know, 50 kills almost at 20 minutes. But... Still, the reason we're winning this clown fiesta is because we were able to make better decisions earlier in the game. You know, path to the, to the right lane, gank in the right way. Um, you know, try to be efficient, try to get objectives. Uh, don't ask for a leash, you know. If you can afford to not have one um here i don't have flash but we could make a play here the, th the thing is like the thing is like when i'm making these plays 
I see Aatrox top, I saw Seraphine bot, so I know they're split up. And I know that I have 11 kills and I'm really, really strong. So you can just force plays. And you, I actually would recommend you force plays when they're split up and you're fed. Otherwise, the game's just going to drag on forever, which happens a lot in low elo. So I think we'll pick up something here, right? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Big man. Boom. Oh, baby. Yo. I'm not done with you, Jays. Ah, that's such a good play. What a good play. And that's a game-winning play right there. That's why, see, they're split up. You have a lead. Go, 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 right? Try to make something happen. And if you mess up, try to learn from it. Now, here's another mistake they made, right? Three of them are dead. It's only Aatrox and Pike. And we have four players. If they're going to stay under this, this little weak tier two tower, we're killing them. I'm full HP. So I'm going in. I mess up my unburrow actually, which was really bad of me. I'm tanking tower, so my team has no pressure. Tanking tower for quite a long time because of our armor. And then I E await so Pike doesn't ult me. He did have ulti. Yeah, he could have killed me there. If I didn't E away, he would have killed me. All right, cool. Great time to recall. Uh, we have two objectives up. What you should do now is figure out, am I close to Dragon Soul? Yes, let's go get the Dragon then. If not, you could just prep Baron, you know, put wards around it like this and just, you know, put a control ward here and just do Baron to close out the game. But let's see what we do here. I think I'd go for his Gromp because uh, after you kill the enemy, it's good to take as much as you possibly can from their jungle because you got to think about it like this, right? I'm going to kill this Gromp right now, right? Hold on. Hold on, and... Okay. I just got... It doesn't say. I got about 300 XP and 80 gold. But essentially, because Udyr doesn't get that anymore, I got pretty much 600 XP and 160 gold because of how much I denied them. So when, you get, when you're able to get an enemy Gromp versus your Gromp, it's way more worth it to get the enemy camp. So really good to try to go for enemy camps when they're dead. Um, if you're not going to get an objective like Baron. Looks like I see my team kind of running it here. I'm trying to like hover. Now I'm in a bad spot. I just got to get out of here now, which I do. <laughs> Rooted, by the way. Yeah, we're just going to get out of here. Blast cone usually spawns there. Yep. All right. Now, dragon is available. But now we overextended. We, stay we overstayed our welcome. And two of my members are dead. Now you have two decisions you can make here. Either just give them the dragon, which is fine. That's a fine decision to make. Or... Go ahead and try to fight a three versus, what is it, five? I mean, all of them are alive, but I don't know if all of them are here yet. Either way, honestly, in hindsight, you should just give this dragon because if you die here, they could position for Baron. But here I am being egotistical. Aatrox is top. I'm like, you know what? I have an angle on these guys. And then I go in. Check this out. They have no ward. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Again, try to keep it keep, uh, keep an eye on the heels. This thing is so OP, man. All right, I R to dodge some abilities. Uh, I didn't get a single heal off. <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys kept an eye on that one. Either way, it's okay. Hindsight, bad play. You know, it's fine. It, it was not a good play. Uh, they could position for Baron, but we have a really strong Yone and Malphite alive, so they're probably not going to try. All right, let's go ahead. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, so now we're just going to set up for Baron. Baron's only objective left on the map. We have a control ward nicely placed there, but ooh, someone's TP in mid. We're going to kill them. Whoever that is, that's a dumb play by them. That was a really dumb TP. I'm going to press my Q, right? And the, the same combo I told you earlier, Q into R into Stride Breaker. Brother, you're not going anywhere. You're going back to the to to, to Dor what's his name? Doran. Go have a nice chat with Doran. For 38 seconds. Now, after that kill, I don't rush Baron. Why? Because my mid laner is also dead. He does have TP advantage, but it's fine. I'm I'm not in a hurry to to, to win this game. We're fine. We're scaling. We're doing good. We have really good champions. I see red buff, and it goes to everyone on our team, so I just go grab that. Everyone gets red buff now. I don't do Krugs here, because what's more important, your Krug camp or killing the enemy team and doing Baron? Please don't say Krug camp. 
There, there was a right answer to that. So I look at bot. Aatrox, I know doesn't have TP. He used it on the dragon fight. Their bot lane is completely out of position. I'm pretty sure I spam ping and annoy my team to go in here with Malphite. Boom, boom, boom. Get in, get in there. All right, we get a Seraphine flash. We're not going to chase, so she doesn't like funnel us all into a Seraphine R. I go around, actually. Check this out, I go around. And now I know Seraphine has no flash. If she gets in range, she is gone. All right, Pike queued, and he is going to be boop. And then right into Seraphine with no flash. And here's where the Sundered Sky is just beautiful. Watch this. So I'm killing Seraphine here. Flash away from that pullback. Finish her off. And then look at this heal. Okay, the heal got nullified by the damage. Now, I saw Aatrox and Jace here. There's only two of them alive. They're chasing me. They think they have me on the ropes. I know my team is coming. They are on their way, and I'm very tanky at this point. 125 armor, 157 MR, and I think my jack show... Is it activated? I think it is. Anyway, I go back in. We get the Sundered Sky heal. 200 HP there. Finish off the Aatrox Stride Breaker. I'm going to go for Jace because I know Aatrox is dead by now. R. Boom, right over the wall. I'm going to tank because we are very tanky. And we do so much damage. And we have a lot of healing, too. Healing done. 3,063. Nice. There we go. There it is. I actually like... I like emoting my team. Like, good job. I think it, I think it, morale is half the game on League of Legends, honestly, dude. So, like, when, when good things happen, you know, drop them a little okay. Little little heart emoji. I think that's it, right? That's it, guys. That's it. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Definitely something different. I don't. I don't think I've ever done one of these for myself. I think I've done one video like eight years ago where I I watched a silver player replay to try to help him, but never my own. Um, so let me know what you think. I feel like I talked a lot, maybe too much. Um, but I hope you guys learned something, if anything. Uh, but yeah, let me know. Again, feedback, really important on this one. I'm going to post this on the TV channel um, to see, you know, like kind of, I already have a, ma a main channel video, uh, Night Blue 3 channel. So I'm going to post this on the TV channel and you guys let me know what you think. All right, uh, GG, uh, do you guys want to see the damage charts? Yeah, let's go see the damage charts real fast. All right, damage charts. We did the most damage in the game. Beautiful. This is the right game, right? And damage taken. Oh, oh, this build is so good, guys. Healing done. We did more healing than Aatrox. That's disgusting. That's because of our uh, Burrow passive and the Sundered Sky. That's Rek'Sai stocks are up. You guys need to play some Rek'Sai. And the runes, everything really good. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.